All right, guys, we're going to make a little rock candy today. Um, but to set something up for later, I'm just going to plant this idea in your mind. Um, will water dissolve more or less of something, a solid, like granulated sugar, when it is cold or when it is warm? And now that might be an intuitive thought or an intuitive question for a lot of us, um, maybe those of us who have baked or uh, done food prep before, but for some of us, uh, it might not be something that we thought about. So let's just experiment a little bit. Uh, right here, I have uh, 400 grams of sugar, and I have two cups of water. This water is room temperature. I just took the temperature. It is about 74 degrees, about room temperature. 74, 75 degrees. Yeah, so it's about room temperature. I just took that uh, temperature with the thermometer. Um, this water has just been sitting out in my apartment. So that's just the temperature of the air. So let's see how much sugar we can dissolve in it. I'm going to start with a, I'm going to start with small amounts and then we're going to go from there. So let's start with a teaspoon of sugar. Yeah, and we got some pretty serious solids floating on the bottom there. So this is about the time where yesterday in the lab, you would see that there are um, undissolved solids at the bottom and a little simulation lab would say saturated because we're getting solids down there at the bottom. So now let's uh, transfer this to a pan and continue making rock candy. So we're going to take the water and we're going to put it in a pan. And we're going to put it on a low flame and we're going to let that come up to a simmer. All right, so now my pot's at a simmer, light boil. So I'm going to turn it down to a low flame just to keep it warm, keep it hot. And I'm going, oop, a little higher than that. You still want a little bit of a simmer. And I'm going to start adding the rest of my four cups of sugar, a little bit at a time. So that was a lot more than a tablespoon, but it pretty much immediately starts to dissolve. Look at that. Look how quickly that dissolved and went away. So what connections are we making between temperature and how much stuff something can dissolve. Solubility, the measure of how much stuff something can dissolve. Look at that, it just melts away. So why is it that the increased temperature is increasing the solubility of the sugar in the water? Well, um, it has to do with kinetic molecular theory. When the particles are more high energy, and they are moving faster and colliding more frequently, when the sugar molecules get into the water, the water collides with them and starts to break them down. And the just like you need the proper orientation of um, molecules to collide and cause a reaction, you need uh, the positive polar ends of the water molecules to connect with the negative polar ends of the sugar molecules. And if there's just more motion and more activity, that's going to happen more frequently. And you're going to uh, open up spaces in the water for it to dissolve that sugar. So more energy, uh, particles are moving faster, higher energy, and they are capable of dissolving more solids. I'm actually always surprised by this, and this always dissolves much faster than I'm expecting. And I always think to myself, wow, that's crazy. I just put four cups of sugar into two cups of water. What we call this is a super saturated solution. When we can mess with the temperature in order to create a solution that has more, like an excess of stuff dissolved in it than it should, um, we call that super saturated. 
And there's a lot of times where super saturated solutions present themselves in the real world. So once you get that four cups dissolved, four cups of sugar dissolved in two cups of water. Now uh, the sugar is all dissolved, but the uh, consistency should be much thicker. So the water is uh, thicker, more syrupy than it was when you started. All right, so for the last step in the process, you're gonna need your food coloring for color. Uh, you're going to need um, a cake pop stick, or in my case, a uh, Chinese takeout um, chopstick. Uh, and you're going to want to wet that with water and then dip it in your sugar so you get a nice coating of uh, sugar on that stick. Okay? So take your pot. You should let it cool for a bit. You don't want to put the hot syrup directly into a glass, so let it cool a bit. And then carefully pour into your glasses. You'll notice that it's not really clear white like water anymore because there's so much sugar in it. And then the fun part, your coloring. Um, I'm gonna make a blue one, why not? Blue for AGL. Come on now. That's very interesting. Very interesting. The viscosity of the water is so high that the food dye isn't really mixing in with it. That's very interesting. Okay, and for my other one, I'm gonna make an orange for Syracuse. So, a few drops of yellow there, a few drops of red, and hopefully that'll come out as a nice orange. And then I'm going to use a spoon to stir them up. It's very important that you don't use the cake pops to stir them up. You really don't want to use your sugar-coated. Uh, string use, works well if you have string at hand. Um, whoops, got to use a different one. String works well uh, if you don't have string. Straws, uh, takeout sticks, or takeout chopsticks, anything will do. Just make sure that they're coated. Yeah, that's a good color. Make sure that they are indeed coated with sugar. So now I'm going to take them and you're going to want to put it right down in the middle and if you can prop it up on something. If you just lean it against the side that works too. I think that's what I'm going to do. Just gently put them in. Okay and now it's important that when you put these somewhere you put them somewhere that they're not going to be disturbed right. You want to leave them alone for Oh, at least a few days. So um, you don't want to disturb them. You don't want them to stir. You don't want any of that. And so make sure that the syrup is cooled. Uh, make sure that you put in a nice food dye combination. You might want to also put in like vanilla uh, flavoring or something else if you have it. Um, and then put it right in there and leave them. And you're going to leave them for a few days once you put them in there. So put them somewhere like a cabinet or um, on top of a shelf where they're not going to be disturbed. All right, guys, let's check back on this in a few days.